Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 13.3, Area of Combined Rectangles. Our essential question is, how can you find the area of combined rectangles? Go ahead and turn in your Go Math book to Lesson 13.3 and we'll begin. So we learned yesterday in our video that the formula for area is base times height. And so as you can look at here for rectangle A, you can see that we have a base of 2 meters and we have a height of 6 meters. Now we made an imaginary line to cut right here to separate our two separate rectangles. So we know we have 2 times 6 meters would equal 12 squared meters. So I'm just going to put 12 there to know that that would be equal to 12 squared meters. Now let's take a look at rectangle B. We can see that the base is 7 meters and the height is 4 meters. Therefore, 7 times 4 would be 28 squared meters. Now all we have to do is just add the combined squared meters. We'll have 12 plus 28, which would equal 40 squared meters. Now for some of you mathematicians out there, I'm sure that you like other alternative ways to solve math problems. So I'm going to go ahead and show you another way that I've seen kids in the past solve this type of a problem. What you're going to do is you're going to look at this as one entire rectangle. Okay, you have to visualize that this would be my height, which is 10 meters. My base is 7 meters. However, we have to turn it into a full rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and make an imaginary dotted line right here. And we'll call this our invisible rectangle, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to follow our area formula of base times height, which will be 7 meters times 10 meters. That'll give me 70 squared meters. However, I know that this entire thing is not 70 squared meters because remember right here we have this invisible part of my rectangle because this whole thing would be 70 squared meters. However, this part is invisible. It's not part of my shaded rectangles, of combined rectangles. Therefore, I need to subtract. It's like cut this part off of my rectangle of 10 meters by 7 meters. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the dimensions of our base for this imaginary rectangle of 5 meters times 6 meters because base times height. 5 times 6 I know is 30 squared meters. So I'm going to subtract 30 squared meters from my 70 squared meters. And I know that 70 minus 30 equals 40 squared meters. Well, isn't that what we had at the beginning when we just added our two combined shaded rectangles? So either way, you can get that answer. You can either do way number one, which is add up both of your areas of your two rectangles that you see and add them up that are combined, or you can make an imaginary rectangle and subtract this part. That's not really part of your combined rectangles. Either way, you'll get the same answer. So let's go on to another one. So step number one, if we're going to find the area of combined rectangles, is we have to make two rectangles. So for here, I'm going to take my pencil, and you can do the same thing with yours. Do this along with me. You can just make a dotted line here. Here's one option. And you can find now the area of rectangle A and rectangle B. You can look and see that my base would be 9 feet because up the top right here is 9 feet and the height is 5 feet. 9 times 5 is 45 squared feet. Now let's look at the next rectangle which is B. We can say that my base is 14 feet and the height of this one right here is not 12 but it's just 7 because as you can see here is the rectangle. It goes up 7 feet not 12 feet. The reason why you, and don't get confused, the reason why this is 12 feet is because if you were to add this 7 feet plus this portion right here which is 5 feet, 5 plus 7 would equal the same amount of 12 feet. So don't get uh, confused by seeing the 12 on this side. That 
That is there in case you were to make an imaginary rectangle going vertically, then you would need to know the 12 times 9. So that's why that's really there as well. But anyways, let's go back to making our two rectangles. Rectangle A we found was 9 times 5, which is 45 squared feet, and rectangle B would be 14 times 7. So if I were to work out 14 times 7, I would say 7 times 4 ones is 28 ones. 7 times 1 10 is 7 tenths, plus 2 more is 9 tenths. Therefore, rectangle B would be 98 squared feet. Now remember, our last step is just to add your combined areas. So I want to line up my tens and my ones place, 98 plus 45, and we would get 143 squared feet for the area of the combined two rectangles. Now, I have seen kids in the past not want to make their rectangle this way, have two combined rectangles that way, but they would prefer to make it vertically. So I'm going to do this to show you that we're going to get the exact same answer. Here we're going to have rectangle A and rectangle B. Now as you can see, rectangle A has a base, not a 14, but my base is going to go from this corner or this vertice to this mark, which will show me that it should be 9 feet times 12 feet. So 12 times 9 would equal 108 squared feet. I'm going to put 108 right there. And then my rectangle B is going to be my base of 5 feet. The reason why I know this is 5 feet is because right above it is 5 feet. So it's going to be the same down below. 5 times 7 is 35. So I'm going to write 35 squared feet right in there. And now I'm just going to add my two combined rectangles to get the total amount of square feet. Look at that. We have the same answer as our last time, which is 143 squared feet. I'm going to put S, Q, and F, T for feet. Now remember, there was the other way that I said that many kids like to do that shows that they're mathematicians, and that is uh, to uh, find the area of the entire rectangle, find an imaginary rectangle, and then um, subtract it. Again, that is your choice for those of you that like the extra challenge. You would then just say, what is 14 times 12? And then you would just find the area of the entire rectangle, and then you would just subtract this imaginary square of 5 times 5, which would be 25. So you would still get 143, because you would do 12 times 14, find that product, and then subtract 25, and you're still going to get 143 squared feet. Again, either way, whatever is the easiest for you, whichever you feel, way you feel comfortable doing. So for question three, you have two different ways that you can make combined rectangles. You can choose to make a rectangle this way and then choose to do five times nine, find the area for A, and then three times, this right here will be six. Do you see right here it's telling me this would be six? So six times three would be 18. So you can actually add those two combined rectangles or you can say, you know what? I would much rather make, um, a rectangle going this way. I'd rather do this and find the area for A and B. I want you to pause the video and I want you to find your answer and then we'll check it together. You choose the way that you'd prefer. Okay, boys and girls, for this one, I decided to make mine, uh, my, my two combined rectangles going this way. Again, it's all right if you would have gone the other way. You still would get the same answer if you added it correctly. But anyways, for a, the area for rectangle A, I found 45 squared inches. And for rectangle B, I got 18 squared inches because 3 times 6 is 18. When I added them together, I got 63 squared inches. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you the alternative way for those of you that like that extra challenge. The alternative way, I would have made an imaginary box to create an entire rectangle of 9 times 11. 9 times 11, I know, is 99 inches squared inches, and I'm going to subtract my imaginary rectangle there, which is a 6 by 6 
um, box or a six by six square. So I would say six times six is 36. So this area is 36 squared inches. So I'll just subtract 36 squared inches from the whole 99 squared inches, which gives me 63 squared inches. Do you see how we got the same exact area? That's the fun thing about this is that there's different ways to get to your answer. All right, so we have 63 squared inches for question number three. Let's go on to question four. Okay, boys and girls, for number four, it's a little tricky because as you can see, you don't see the value of this line segment and this line segment. But the good news is, is you can use your algebra skills to figure them out. It's actually rather fun. I actually enjoy these type of problems. Look right here. You can see that this value is seven feet. Directly across from it, I have nine feet. So this length plus this little amount, this little length right here is going to equal this length. So seven plus what would equal nine? I know seven plus two is nine, so I'm going to put a two right there. Go ahead and write a little two right there next to that line segment. And now let's do the same thing for the bottom. Do you see how this is six feet across, but on top it's four feet across? So four feet plus what? equals six because as you can see this little piece right here plus this piece will equal the same length as down below four plus two is six do me a favor and write a two right below that line now we have our unknown values for our sides that we don't see the numbers for but now it's okay because now we can make our two separate rectangles I'm going to go ahead and make my rectangle this way. However, you may not want to do that. You may want to say, but Mrs. Young, I'd rather make mine going this way. Boys and girls, it's okay. You can figure out either way. Go ahead and I want you to choose and solve this one on your own and we'll check it together. You can either make your rectangle going vertically or you can make it going horizontally and have two different areas defined and combine them together. Press pause now and find your areas. Okay boys and girls, I found the area for my small little rectangle on top to be 2 times 4 or base of 4 times 2 would be 8 squared feet and then 6 times 7 to be 42 squared feet and now I just have to combine my two areas together. 42 plus 8 equals 50 squared feet. Did you get 50 squared feet for yours? Now you might have done it the other way. You might have said, well, Mrs. Young, I'd rather make A and B this way and do two times seven is 14 and four times nine is 36. And I wanna add up and get 50 that way. Do you see how you can get the same answer either way? Did anybody try the method where you make your big rectangle and subtract the small invisible one? If you did, you should have done this. You should have said, I'm going to make this my imaginary rectangle, and I'm going to find my area of 9 times 6. My base of 6 times 9 is 54, and I'm going to subtract this small little area of my square up here, invisible square, of 2 times 2 is 4, and I can get 50. Boys and girls, we got 50 squared feet either way we did it. Now the good news is, is if you are watching this video, you don't have to do five or six just yet. Hold off on those, and we will be doing those probably later in the next couple days, okay? Let's move on to the problem solving. Okay, so the question for this says, Nadia makes the diagram below to represent the counter space she wants to build in her craft room. What is the area of the space that Nadia has shown for scrapbooking? So for the first one, you wanna find the area for scrapbooking. Now, boys and girls, you had to figure out what this height is for just up to the scrapbooking rectangle. All right, remember how I talked to you about how you can figure that out? If this whole thing is 15 and you're take, cutting off 11, the difference would go right here. Or you can figure out this side. If this whole side is nine, you're chopping off this amount of this square. If this is a square, five 
would be up top, so 5 would be right here, then you'd have to figure out this unknown value. Then you can figure out the area for scrapbooking. And next, what would be the area for painting? Now remember, this painting is a perfect square. So if you know the base is five feet, you should know what the height is. Go ahead, pause the video, try those two on your own, and we'll check them together. Okay, you should have given the value of this height to be five for painting and four for scrapbooking. So you should have done 13 times four to figure out your scrapbooking area. And if you do 13 times four, you should get 52 squared feet. So I'll put 52 with a little SQ and a FT. And then I'm going to look at the painting question for number eight. What will be the area of the space she has shown for painting? Again, if we know that this is five times five will give me the square area of painting, it will be five times five is 25 squared feet. And that should be your answer for those two. I hope you got those right. Let's go on to our homework questions on the back side now. Okay, so for question number one, it says, what is the area of the combined rectangles below? Now I've taught you a couple different ways you can do it. You can break it up into smaller rectangles and find those combined areas, or you can solve for the imag for the whole rectangle and then subtract this imaginary rectangle right here. That's one way you can solve this question, or you can just do your combined rectangles. Now you may have one going this way, or you may have one going this way. Again, you have to find out the values of each side though in order to do that correctly. Number two, Marquise is redecorating his bedroom. What could Marquise use the area formula to find? A, B, C, or D. A, how much space should be in a storage box. B, what length of wood is needed for a shelf. C, the amount of paint needed to cover a wall. Or D, how much water will fill up his new aquarium. Please don't forget to rate yourself level one, two, three, or four. If you feel like you're level one or two, please don't worry. We're gonna be practicing this tomorrow in class for the next two days as well. So you will have plenty of time to get really good at this topic. Again, here are your two questions. Take your time, show your work, and answer the other questions at the bottom of the page. And we'll check them together tomorrow. Have a great night.